Your Majesty, uh, King Graham. Oh, uh, yes, Minister、um, Gervain, sire. Of course. My apologies, Gervain. Not necessary, Your Majesty. After all, I've been your security and defense minister for but a short while. Yes. Where did you say you were from again? Just some small, insignificant land to the far south. Pales greatly in comparison to your realm, my lord. Ah, do you have something to report? As a matter of fact, my liege, there's a small concern regarding the duty shifts of some of the castle guards and of the countryside patrols. Also, we are expecting our armed entourage from our nearest neighbor to return within the week, and there is the matter of an alliance with, my liege. My apologies again, Minister Gervain. Please continue. Yes, as I was saying, there is the matter of an alliance with Usperia. They have become a strong nation now, and it may be prudent to show our willingness to support them, lest they decide we are more of a hindrance than a help. Does the king there have any daughters who've come of age? Uh, I do not believe so, sire. As for the security arrangements for the royal ball held last week, I do believe the evening went by very smoothly. I dare say just about every princess in this region attended, and not one lost slipper, to coin a phrase. Ugh! Please do not remind me. Indeed, they were none too fetching. Would you like me to go over your plans for today, my lord? Very well. Hmm. Oh, forgive me once again. I am afraid that my mind wanders much these days. I wonder if my predecessor experienced times like these. No doubt. Though I did not know King Edward the Benevolent personally, I understand he was a happy and astute man during his married life, before his wife passed away. That is, if I may be so bold, perhaps my lord is feeling that certain rooms in his castle are somewhat sparsely filled. The throne room, for example, and other rooms that serve but a single soul, like your dining room and your bed chambers. <laughs> Perhaps, but I do fear I've met no such candidates that would fill the rooms you have mentioned. You should not lose heart, Your Majesty. If you pause to reflect for but a moment, you may see clearly what is hidden to others. You gaze into the mirror. The minister's words seem to echo in your head. If you pause to reflect for but a moment, not that you've been doing much else lately. For many weeks now, you've been reflecting over the direction your life has taken. While Daventry has prospered under your wise leadership, so far your existence has been a dreadfully lonely one. Wait, the mirror is changing. As you watch, you begin to see a series of images, though you struggle to fathom their meaning. You recognize the landscape. It is Kalima, a land not far from Daventry.
you see the most beautiful woman you have ever set eyes upon. Somehow you can feel her sadness and her intense desire to leave that place. She is a prisoner in that tower. Did you find what you were looking for, sire? I require my ship ready for transport, Gervain. I shall be going on a trip presently. Indeed. Where shall I tell the captain you'll be heading? To Kalima. I have to find someone. I see. Well, if you must go, it is my duty to ensure that you leave prepared. Arm yourself, sire. I hear Kalima is not the safe haven it once was. Of course. I shall take the sword of the first king, as is my right. A wise precaution, sire. And, uh... If I may be so brash to ask, who might you be seeking? If all goes well, my bride. Sister Agatha. How may I be of service? An opportunity has arisen, sister. I trust you still have your captive held securely away. Of course. A bit cruel, keeping her locked away like that. Do you not think? No. How dare she flaunt her beauty in front of all to see? Her foolish male admirers see her and forget that I was the most beautiful of all in my day. And in your own special way, you are still beautiful. <laughs> you devil! That is not an unfair description. Now, you mentioned the service, I believe. Yes, the King of Daventry has advised his faithful minister that he shall be departing for Kalima presently. On a quest, you might say. Really? What kind? The kind that involves sticking his neck out to rescue a damsel in distress. And what have I to do with his neck? Put simply, my dear, sever it!
A day's journeying from Daventry has found you by the shores of Colima. Your ship, the Grand Thethor, and its crew have deposited you and will return the day after tomorrow. Hopefully this will give you enough time to locate and release the imprisoned woman you saw in the magic mirror. You need to swim close. You untangle the net from the pylon and take it. You open the mailbox. Inside, there is, incredibly, a letter addressed to the resident. You decide to leave it in there. A card has been dropped in it also. You read it. You replace the card and You peer into the depths of the dark hole. As luck would have it, you discover a beautiful set of earrings hidden inside. Each one is laced with glittering diamonds and contains a lovely blue sapphire stone in the center. Perhaps someone stashed them here. At any rate, you take them into your possession.
you get a feeling. The fallen picket feels reasonably sturdy and is pointed at one end. Believing that you may find a use for it, you retrieve it and carry it with you. My name is Graham. What is yours? Possum. That is what my grandma calls me. She is not at all well these days. I was collecting flowers for her, but now I cannot anymore. Why is that? My basket is missing. I have looked everywhere for it. It must be around here somewhere. I will keep my eye out for it. Thank you, Graham. You have run into an evil enchanter. The tree is unclimbable and the vines are unattainable. You look under the log and discover a clam lying beneath it. You pick it up. You open the clam and discover, to your surprise, a dazzling pearl. Don't throw that into the lake. The best place to attack. Don't throw that. The best place to. You walk into position and try to catch the baby bird. You throw the net over the pond, and the baby bird is caught unharmed. The lemons on the ground are spoiled. You would do best to pick a fresh one from the nearby tree. You reach out and pluck a large, juicy-looking lemon from the tree.
As you pick up the gold coins, they suddenly turn dark. Now they resemble ordinary metal. Wait a minute. This isn't gold. It's fool's gold. As you near the cave, the bat symbol above the entrance starts radiating an ominous black glow.
Wait until you get home. You have run into an You have come upon a quick little dwarf. You take the basket.
you hand the basket to Possum. Thank you, kind sir. Please take this flower. I'm afraid it's all I have to give you. It is more than enough. I notice that you have picked only yellow flowers. Of course. Is it not customary for one to pick yellow flowers for another who is gravely ill? Certainly it is. I'm sorry to hear about your grandma, Possum. Thank you. Goodbye. You release the little bird into the pond. It feels fine. You pick up the white feather and put it carefully away. You look for a nice, large pumpkin to take from the patch. Hey! Watch it! Oh, sorry. I was not aware you could talk. Likewise! Anyway, be careful where you're treading. You're spoiling the good soil by standing so close. And I got eight kids to feed! You glance at the smaller pumpkins. These must be her children. I only count seven. Some strange man who spoke even stranger came by. He claimed to be a hort, a hort of the uh, horticulture. Claimed to know a bit about plants. I let him take a look at my little darlings. Anyway, before I knew it, he'd gone and pinched one of my babies. Took off towards the town, he did. I all the knife. Just because we're plants doesn't mean we don't deserve any respect. I am sure that is true. When you peer into the hole of the pine tree, you see a mallet lying there. You pick it up and take it with you. Hey! What? Who said that? I did. Huh? I'm down here, in the hay. Oh. Well, who are you? My name is... Uh... Um... Yes? Hmm. I can't seem to remember. Well then, what are you? Oh. I'm a... Um... Uh... Yes? Hmm. Can't seem to remember that either. Well, what are you doing in this haystack? That's easy! I was looking for... Oh. Um... You can't remember? No. Sorry. How long have you been in there? Let's see. It couldn't be longer than... Uh... Yes? Three? Maybe four weeks? Weeks? Yep. Pardon me for saying, but you sound as if you have a bit of a cold. Yes. 
It's all this hay! It's giving me hay fever! There is no reason to use a... You see a man bending over the fountain. He appears to be trying to retrieve something from it. Aha! Got him! Greetings, merchant. Ah! To you, good day! A visitor arrived new, no? A sense I possess for these things? Need you have for my wares of great specialty? Perhaps, but first, I'm curious. Where did you come by such a pumpkin? Eyes quite keen have you. Indeed, a specimen unique it is. Mama, me want mama. Be quiet. The gift of speech among plants so rare, yes? Quite so. Are you planning to sell it? Sell? Never would I sell such a thing as this. It'll make me incredibly rich. Uh... I mean, entrusted it was to my care. Watch over it, I must. Mama! Take me back to my mama! Forget it. I'm not taking you back to that patch. So pipe down. Pardon? Ah, of importance I speak not. Trouble to your ears, I meant none. The pearl rolls precarious. You have no... I still wish I had an owl to keep me company. You consider confronting the merchant about the theft of the pumpkin, but as a stranger in town, you don't want to cause a scene. Perhaps a more subtle approach is in order. You have no... You have no... This horse is only interested in eating those flowers. Don't throw that... In The baby pumpkin wants nothing more than to be back with its mother. You consider con it's just a statue. The gold ha The fool's gold feet. The fool The fool's Crystal clear water sparkles in the fountain. A few valueless pennies lie at the bottom that the merchant didn't bother taking. The fool's gold again shines the instant the coins leave your hand. Poking strangers Three coins in the fountain. What? Let me see. Ha <laughs> ha! Got him! In his haste, the merchant pockets the coins without even looking at them. It seems he didn't even realize that they were fake. Uh-oh, looks like he's heading back to his stand. The statue is... You have no... Re Poking straight... The statue.
you consider confronting the merchant, repressing the urge to burst into song. You have run into it. You release the lid. It feels, it feels. You pick up the white feather and put it carefully away. You look for a nice large pump. Oh. Likewise. Anyway. You glad. I yeah. Well, then some hold off the color to. When you peer into the hole of the pine tree, there is no Hey! What? Who said that? I did! Huh? I'm down here, in the hay! Oh! Well, who are you? My name is... Uh... Um... Yes? Hmm. I can't seem to remember. Well then, what are you? Oh, I'm a... Um... Uh... Yes? Hmm. Can't seem to remember that either. Well, what are you doing in this haystack? That's easy! I was looking for... Oh. Um... You can't remember? No. Sorry. How long have you been in there? Let's see. It couldn't be longer than... Uh... Yes? Three? Maybe four weeks? Weeks? Yep. Pardon me for saying, but you sound as if you have a bit of a cold. Yes. It's all this hay! It's giving me hay fever! You see a man bending... Aha! Uh -huh. 
got him. Greetings, merchant. Ah, to you, good day. Me, me. Shh. Perhaps. Ah. Be quiet. Be quiet. Ne uh, forget it. Pardon? Ah. The shiny, beautiful pearl seems to radiate a soft glow. You have no reason to give that to the merchant. Poking strangers in the street is usually considered bad form. The fool's gold again shines the instant the coins leave your hand. Three coins in the fountain. What? Let me see. The town continues to the north away. You do not feel like doing business with the merchant at the moment, and you do not have anything else to say yet. Show me a sign. The farmers are deep in conversation. You think it best not to interrupt them with idle chit-chat. You're right for not enabling me to protect my kids. The pumpkin hands you a gold brooch with a beautiful blue sapphire.
you have run into an evil enchant- You fill the bowl with the fresh spring water. After using your sword to cut the lemon surface, you squeeze some of its juice into the bowl. Then you discard the lemon. You can't... You pour the bitter water over the baby pumpkin. It seems to like that. Thank you again, Graham. Here, take this. The pumpkin reaches into her head and pulls out a candle, which she then hands to you. That thing has been jammed in my head for as long as I can remember. I know it ain't much, but maybe you'll find some use for it. Thank you. Don't mention it. Besides, it's really hard for me to sleep with that thing lit up inside my head all night. There appears to be a sign on the door. There appears to be a The door is locked. You notice a tiny corner of something poking out slightly from beneath it. You attempt to edge it out with your fingers, but you cannot manage to get a grasp on it. It's you, King Graham of Daventry. The door is plain and has a mail slot. It also has a sign posted on it. You read it. You also notice something sticking out from under the door. You consider following the ancient war tradition, making sure that no one is watching. You slide your thin blade under the door and draw out what appears to be a letter. It is a letter. You open the letter and read it. Dear applicant, 
Please find and close the library membership card to which you are now entitled. The five-year application process has concluded, and we are pleased to inform you that your status as a member of the town library is confirmed. Welcome to an exclusive group of patrons. Yours sincerely, Town Librarian. P.S. Please sign your name on the card to ensure validation. From curiosity, have you knowledge of the speaking pumpkin that once sat here? Misplaced it has become. Speaking pumpkin? Oh, uh, that. Uh, no, I do not see it anywhere. Sorry. The pearl rolls. You have no re. You quickly grab the quill while the librarian isn't looking and sign your name on the blank library card. You replace the quill before the librarian notices it missing. Will you accept this? Yes! You are younger than I expected. Uh, I eat well and get a lot of exercise. I see. So, what do I do now? Borrow. You mean I can take books from this library? No. Oh. Yes? Could you recommend a good book? The librarian has placed the book on the desk for you to read. Thoughtful, isn't she? This book is entitled, Kalima, Perfect One Day, Better the Next. Browsing through it, you notice an interesting excerpt. You have just discovered the gravity of your situation. Incredible. The door you have discovered has taken on the appearance of a face. 
It is silent, however, and almost seems to be waiting for something. Uh, greetings. I am King Graham of Daventry. Would you by any chance know of the way to a strange island on which stands a quartz tower in which a beautiful woman is being held captive? You feel more than a little foolish. Surely a door, even one with a face, would neither hear nor understand you. I am the door of destiny. I am sought out by many, found by few and opened by none so far. For indeed, only once can I be opened. Such is the magic that I am. Through me will you find the destiny you seek, if you cannot perform a task. Anything! You feel intense exuberance that you have come so close to your goal in such a short time. You must bring me the gems of nature. I beg your pardon? The stone door rumbles from deep within. For a time, it says nothing. And then... Gems of three, I ask of thee to fetch, collect, and bring to me. In water shall you find the first, though not the type, to quench your thirst. Spy the second, high in the sky. With wings or no, thou still must fly. Through swampy mire, so it is heard, in lone dark castle lies the third. Should you succeed, my noble king, to your fair maiden, I will bring. I warn you, though, you should beware. A danger cloaked awaits you there. Without warning, the stony face falls silent. As you watch, it gradually smooths out to become the mountainside face once more. You notice that, within the door, three shallow indentations have sunk into the rock's surface. Presumably, the three gems of nature must fit here. Now all you have to do is find them. How did that poem go again? You're not... The paper is torn and dirty. It looks like a flyer of some sort. You smooth out the torn and tattered paper and read, Curios I have, to the town do come, awaiting I am. Not a good idea. Yes? Could you recommend another good book? This book is entitled, Way Below Your League, A Look at Sentient Aquatic Life. Browsing through it, you notice an interesting excerpt. 